Добрый день, коллеги. Hello, everybody. We are waiting for our lecture. I am trying to, to connect him. All right. All right. We can hear <laughs> We can hear you, but if we can... Yes, yes. And we can see you. Uh, okay, uh, dear friends, uh, my name is Vasily Kuznetsov, and uh, we are ready to start our uh, lecture. And uh, I'm very happy uh, that today uh, Professor Mustafa Tsir, a well-known Libyan sociologist and, uh, and uh, one of the best specialists on the socio-political development in Libya, <laughs> Uh, you know, I dreamed about uh, uh, about meeting Professor Atir uh, through uh, several years, and uh, I'm <laughs> happy that finally we have a uh, we have a chance to uh, host you to uh, welcome you at our conference. I, I hope that we'll have uh, a chance to host you in Moscow in uh, when it, uh, the weather is, uh, will be better. Uh, but uh, now uh, we're, uh, we're ready to start. Uh, and uh, the front of our meeting is uh, your speech for about uh, uh, 30, 40 minutes, how, how, how do you want? And then we'll have a discussion. And uh, the subject, uh, the topic of our meeting is the negative uh, consequences uh, of the Arab Spring in Libya. Uh, Mustafa, uh, Professor Atir, uh, the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for giving me this chance to talk to you this afternoon. And uh, I'm, I'll be also glad to meet you, to visit you in Moscow, or you come to Libya and see you sometime in, pers in person. All right, let me start right away. The, um, the title of the topic of today is on the negative consequences of the Arab Spring data from Libya. Uh, as intro an introduction, the Arab Youth Rebellion, which ignited by Tunisian youth during late 2010 and early 2011, spilled over to include Libya, Egypt, Syria, and Yemen, was welcomed by many Arab intellectuals as an Arab Spring, because it came as a big surprise for those who were following Arab political behavior and how Arab dictators succeeded in controlling their subjects. However, the unexpected finally exploded by the act of a Tunisian street vendor on uh, the streets of a Tunisian small town. It was expected Libya will be next, but the domino effect uh, reached the, even uh, went to Egypt and even Yemen before coming back to Libya. The, upri the Libyan uprising actually, uh, the uh, actually finally exploded the, mm, the, before coming back to Libya. The Libyan uprising started as a peaceful demonstration in the eastern region city in the city of Benghazi. But the regime responded furiously using all kinds of military hardware and ammunition. Such ex excessive use of power against unarmed protesters did not stop the, uh, the revolt in Benghazi. Instead, it spread to all parts of the country. Within two weeks, the uprising reached almost every major city. But Gaddafi forces succeeded in restoring his rule in, the, in most eastern and southern towns and cities, while protesters kept the western region under their control. It, eventually, the conflict between the two groups drifted into a full scale of civil war. The goal of the demonstrators was expressed in two slogans. People want regime change. People want to build democratic uh, civil state. Uh, 
In spite of the help of the, uh, the, the rebels uh, get from the international community, the struggle to topple the regime drifted into a civil war which lasted for 246 days. When demonstrators were chanting in cities, streets, we shall build a democratic society, they looked on happy and highly optimistic. As soon as their ecstasy subsided down, most Libyans discovered that the whole experience felt like a pleasant dream. But they, but they were come to discover that their country is in, ru in ruins. And in other words, instead of putting the country on the track of building a democratic society, they have come to realize that their long or bloody ordeal which ended 42 years of dictatorship has also destroyed all important institutions, state administration, the army, and the law enforcement agencies. In addition, the mechanisms within, within the value system, which tra traditionally enforce social ties and, and social cohesiveness were replaced by more than 1,000 militias each, each loyalty to a small social entity, namely a clan or a tribe instead of Libya. 10 years later, the second goal was not achieved, even though during this period of time, six government took, took turns in ruling the country, but the real power remained in the hands of leader of the armed militias, who were and continue to be competing for political and economic gains. Because, because state jobs are provided on the basis of favoritism rather than uh, competence, each militia has worked hard to get the, uh, its members into the top positions, especially those that make possible for the state employees to easily transfer large amount of money abroad. The priority of civil servants in contemporary Libya is not to serve all citizens, but to use their office to serve their, their close associates and to get as much personal gains as possible. Therefore, it did not come as a surprise when transparency, transparency organization classified Libya as the 168th most corrupt nation out of 180 countries in its uh, 2019 Corruption Perceptions Index. Anyway, instead of government work toward solving few problems and overcoming few obstacles toward building a democratic civil state, each one added new obstacles. Therefore, social problems, which the first government faced right after regime change, instead of having them all disappeared, they grow in number and became more complicated and too difficult to be solved during the near future. And we shall choose for this our discussion of, tonight, of this afternoon at least three of these Pro these unsolvable problems, namely forced migration and internally displaced persons. Second, the explosion of illegal migration and the human trafficking. And third, the development of a subculture of hate and social fragmentation. Forced migration and internally displaced persons. As soon as a Libyan uprising erupted in the second largest city of Benghazi, youth in other cities followed suit, and the flow of individuals fleeing the scene started. The first group to leave their homes and run away was a were the leaders of revolution committees, especially those who committed atrocities of all kinds, including killing. Fearing revenge, most of them had to leave the country and fled to Egypt. As soon as the few, as soon as few young demonstrators were gunned down, loyalty of 
of many citizens in the area shifted from state back to the tribe. Many of those who held all sorts of offices, including military personnel and police force, supported the uprising, and many of them even joined the military groups which were formed to fight Gaddafi's security brigades. And within a week of the uprising, almost all Western region of the country became under the control of local popular committees, which were established in every city and town. In the East, it was a different story. As mentioned earlier, Gaddafi forces succeeded in gaining control on almost all cities and towns in both eastern and southern regions of the country. Only two main cities remained out of Gaddafi's control. During that civil war, it is estimated that one, one, uh, more than one million citizens left their homes to go to Tunis or join other relatives in safe places and became internally displaced persons. This first wave of IDBs was from those cities and towns whose a few of their young men has joined the war against Gaddafi's forces, or its inhabitants show, showed some empathy with the uprising. On the contrary, other cities expressed, expressed their strong loyalty to Gaddafi, and their young men joined paramilitary organizations and uh, assisted their, their regular, the Gaddafi's regular first for forces. In some cases, members of certain paramilitary organizations committed human rights violations, including torture, killing, and rape. After Gaddafi forces lost the war, militias from the cities or towns in the in the in which those uh, acts of human rights violations were committed decided to punish those who engaged in those atrocities and the humiliating crimes but rather than directly directly punishing those persons who committed crimes entire cities would be submitted to punishment consequently cities and towns were destroyed and residents were killed taking prisoners or fled to neighboring countries or became IDPs. At least five cities and towns became ghost towns. In other words, not only members of the paramilitary organizations, but indeed all residents of the city or town were eventually held responsible. In other words, the population of these cities and towns composed the second wave of IDPs. M military, military clashes did not stop there here. Continued as yesterday, it's continued. As yesterday, allies turned against each other. Also, jihadi groups, including ISIS, succeed in controlling major cities. Of course, each military class, regardless of its size, big or small, in, uh, resulted in more IDPs. Thus, thousands of Libyans have then uh, have their normal life interrupted as they experienced the life of homeless people. For many, such experience lasted few months or few years. For others, their ordeal has been going on for the last 10 years. <clears throat> A second major problem will uh, said, we'll discuss this, uh, this this afternoon. The ex I call it the explosion of illegal migration and the human traffic. Illegal migration in Libya is not a new phenomenon. Since oil was discovered during the 60s, the, co the country began to receive groups of legal and illegal migrants. At the beginning, the number of both was not large, just a few thousands, and the majority were Arabs. But as time passed and Libya's economy began to expand, the number of both legal and illegal migrants grew, grew larger and more diversified. It is possible to say that during the 60s 
and the 70s, the topic of illegal migrants was not discussed. This does not necessarily mean that the number was not large. On the contrary, during those two decades, the estimate of illegal migrants constituent to almost one third of the population. Almost all of them were Arabs. Libya official, Libya official policy then, Libya is the country of all Arabs. So the Arabs can come freely, uh, come, come to the country freely. On the other hand, non-Arabs also were able to cross the southern borders, not through official uh, checkpoints, but most of them crossed to, to bo uh, the borders to visit relatives or to take a, the temporary work and go then go back to, to the places where they came from. Very few dare to venture, to venture further north. However, all those can be classified according, according to the law as illegal migrants who made Libya their destination, their final destination. And during that period, there was not one single attempt to cross the Mediterranean using Libyan shores. During the 90s, Libyan foreign policy witnessed a radical shift and from advocacy of pan-Arabs to advocacy of pan-Africans. Consequently, Libya's policy toward immigrants shifted openly toward the preferences of sub-Sahara Africans. Broadly speaking, illegal and clandestine migration in the Mediterranean, of which Libya is part, is not a new phenomenon. It, is, it has its own long history. Certain Mediterranean countries were known to be the starting points for such migration, but Libya was not among them, even though the country has coastal towns which are suitable for jumping up to, to Europe. But suddenly, by the mid-90s, Libya became the most important transit country of illegal migrants from North Africa to Europe. Two reasons were behind this change. First, the EU succeeded in signing treaties with the rest of Mediterranean countries to, uh, to curb illegal migration. The second, Gaddafi, for political reasons, decided to put pressure on certain European countries by exploiting the issue of illegal mig migration. He frankly stated in many of his speeches that he could either facilitate for thousands of sub-Saharan Africans to reach Europe or make Libya's shores out of reach for, a human, for human smugglers toward Europe. European countries, especially Italy, saw that Gaddafi was serious in his threat. By 2004, Italy signed a deal with Libya in an effort to curb illegal migration. Also, Libya agreed to de deport sub-Saharan migrants over Libya to, of Li of Libya to their original countries, including those who were legible for refugee status. In addition, according to that agreement, Italy may hand over to Libya uh, migrants it intercepted in the sea, sea. And of course, Libya is supposed to take them back to their countries. During the Civil War, Gaddafi continued his criticism of the West, describing their intervention on the side of the rebels as the gambling on a and a losing horse. He threatened that unless the West stopped their intervention, uh, their, uh, he would open the migration floodgate and flood the whole Europe with illegal migrants and Europe would become black. All Europe would become black. Even though European leaders took him seriously and began preparing to meet the flow of illegal refugees, Libya, Libyan, Libya during the war was not a source of attempted efforts to reach Europe illegally. When the civil war 
were started, uh, broke out. Almost all foreigners, including illegal migrants, left the country. But as soon as the war ended, workers from neighboring countries began to come back again. At first, all those who had been in Libya decided to come back. Those who could legally enter the country used airline, airlines, but illegal workers used different means. As time passed, it became obvious that thousands of newcomers who had entered the country illegally had joined the scene. It became obvious that the business of uh, trading with illegal migrants has started to boom again, especially since the borders of uh, are, especially the southern borders, so we, which Libya had a very long southern, southern, southern borders actually, are not monitored or controlled by state guards. The field, the field of human trafficking has been wide open for newcomers. As Libya became an important transit country for illegal migrants, Libyan mafia, I mean, Libyan, Libyan men also, but their own mafia groups have developed and established contact with similar groups in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, who would bring individuals close to Libyan southern borders, and from there, illegal migrants would become the responsibility of Libyan smugglers. Almost all illegal migrants do not stay in the south, but rather move up north to coastal cities. The distance between the southern cities and the north is more than 1,000 km kilometers. Uh, and so the 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 but this road or this one thousand kilometers road passes through uh, through the lands of many tribes. So the task of transporting migrants from south to coastal cities is divided into multiple stations. So militias belong to a specific tribe will take the responsibility of uh, smuggling uh, immigrants and take them to the north. Uh, these uh, these, uh, these uh, smugglers who, uh, who uh, in addition to their experience of the back road have a chain of relations which include individuals holding different tribal and security ranks who will come to their help if needed. Thus, the state of the, of the chaos the country drifted into made the country southern border wide open for a flux of illegal migrants, which led many young men and many young Libyan men to join mafia groups which were involved in all kinds of criminal acts, including major human rights violations, to the degree which led the issuance of, a, of sanctions by, by the International Criminal Court and Security Council as well. And Libya became, I mean, has a very, very, very negative um, picture <clears throat> among, uh, among international courts. The third uh, complicated problems, which, uh, which is the result of the Arab Spring, I called it the development of a subculture of hate and social fragmentation or subculture. The subculture of hate will lead to social fragmentation. Libyan society with respect to many major characteristics such as religion, language, ethnicity, and history is relatively homogeneous. All Libyans speak Arabic and are Maliki Sunni Muslims. Although the majority of Libyans are of Arab descent, there are three smaller ethnic groups called Abazir, Tuareg, and Tabu. Nevertheless, a general sociocultural umbrella encompasses com these diverse elements into a somewhat uh, united scene of identity. The Libyan population has a representative of various skin pigmentations, but generally 
there is very little discrimination in places of education, recreation, uh, recreation area, work, or work, work, uh, places of work, or workshop, or residence. That is based on skin color. The one exception is marriage. Marriage continues to be practiced within the, uh, the ethnic boundaries. However, such boundaries became weaker as education lately became one of the most important variables young people consider when choosing a marriage partner. Some sort of name calling or sharing funny, funny jokes occur from time to time. Such behavior is usually kept within the boundaries of the differences between tribes, residence areas in the city, or urban rural lifestyle. Such behavior is of the same kind usually we, we find in other countries which were such, uh, where the North, uh, those who live in the North uh, think they are, they, are, they are in a better situation than those in the, in, the, in the South. But this has changed, this has to be changed with respect to this issue um, raised before discussion. A major change took place when, as soon as Gaddafi came to power, he developed a new vocabulary to refer to, uh, to geographical places, family names of individuals, names of months, administrators of, administrators of divisions, and jobs names. He also has his own list of uh, words and phrases with that uh, uh, convey negative connotations to describe his enemies and members of the opposition. He coined, for example, the term stray dogs to refer to members of the oppositions who had fled to live abroad where they could express themselves freely and actively denounce Gaddafi and his policies. Therefore, when the uprising erupted, he came up with the term rats and hallucinating school dropouts to describe the, his uh, op opponents. The youngsters who succeeded in breaking through the barrier of fear uh, answered back with a barrage of negative titles also. The worst was uh, Ab Abu Shafshufa, which means a vagabond man with long hair with long, dirty hair over his head. The protesters calling their movement a revolution and uh, themselves a revolutionary, where Gaddafi and his supporters viewed the movement as an act of law breaking that was uh, instigated and fomented by foreign intelligence agencies. Consequently, Gaddafi classified all those involved in the uprising as traitors. During the past, past 10 years, Libyan, Libya witnessed many armed clashes between op opposing groups, during which a wide variety of military weapons and were, was used and media technology ex extensively employed. To, to spread the negative descriptions of opponents. The vocabulary of the uh, hate speech was used, raising the level of hatred and hostility to the maximum extent possible, with the intention of intensifying the level of physical fighting and uh, in order to, conf to inflict the highest level of destruction and damage possible. During each type of conflict, members of each side identified themselves as we and referred to the others as, as, as the other. Regardless of which side using we, positive qualities Lost the connection. 
Нет соединения, да? The, uh, professor Atir, some problems with connection. Usually there are some problems on uh, connection in Libya. Uh, yes, now it's good. Microphone. No, microphone, microphone, no voice. Please turn on microphone. Yes, 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 yes. All right, all right. It's okay now. Um, all right. I mean, uh, the the uh, the regardless of which side is using we uh, we positive qualities such as courage, integrity, honesty, and justice were attributed to one's own group, whereas only negative qualities are attributed to, uh, to others. Only members of the we, group, the we group allegedly behave according to the law and possesses good manners and, keen, and uh, are keen to invent the true rituals of Islamic religion. As a result, those who die from the we side will go to heaven, whereas members of the others are traitors, murderers, and uh, have all kinds of negative uh, attributes and behave against Islam. The others are not true believers. They, upon death, will go directly to hell. Libyan, Libyan culture, Libyan culture traits are mainly drawn generally speaking, from Arab heritage and Islamic beliefs and teachings. Individuals are, ex are exposed to mainstream culture values though, uh, th through socialization process. That brings together many institutions, among them the family, the mosque, and the school. It is assumed that the majority of individuals' cultural values and norms are learned from three from these three major uh, sources. Even though most of the components of an, of an individual's value, values um, system are developed through his or her early years, socialization is a is a continuous process and does not stop at certain. Age, uh, age stage. Many values will be added as the individual grows older. As mentioned earlier, the Libyan's uprising that took place in 2011 led to continued fighting between armed militias. Libyans fought against each other using all sorts of military weapons and expressed, and expressed feelings of hate of, hay, of hatred in order to intensify the conflict. As a result of, the, of globalization, the availability of modern means of mass media is not limited to certain societies. It, it become widely used. Therefore, it comes no, as, it comes no surprise that Libyans mm -hmm. hate group used modern mass, mass media efficiently. Each Libyan militia has a Facebook page, and some of them have satellite television stations. The stations may be owned by the militias themselves, or by the tribes or cities to which militia belong, or either belong to a, or funded by a foreign country and was run by Libyans. Both television stations and Facebook pages have been employed to uh, fuel the hostility by accusing individuals of each of the other group of committing all kinds of atrocities. An individual may hate another individual, but keeps his hatred to himself or to herself, and do not act violently against the hated persons. But if the level of hatred increases and becomes quite strong, it is possible that the hate the hater would take a severe action toward the hatred. Uh, 
the, uh, through systematic and, uh, sub, and uh, structural observations, it was possible to record aspects of such behavior during armed conflict that took place in Libya since 2011. Examining the content of materials presented during television programs and advocate, uh, that advocated hate speech or have been communicated through Facebook pages, it became obvious that such a language is new. Libyan did not use such language prior to the uprising, and the language challenges and uh, contradicts the mainstream Libyan cultural values. As such, individuals using such language must have a distinctive set of beliefs and values and norms that are reflected in this new subculture. The new language or a subcul or new subculture of hate emerged yet, uh, 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 which is emerged yet it was, uh, it is still, I mean, uh, it is a new, yet it was different from the mainstream cultural values, even though some their values were based for where were, were, were have had spaces from which the new language was developed. However, such values had to be modified to make room to the uh, for the new inter, inter, uh, for the new interpretations of Islamic law and Sharia in order to justify killing other Muslims. Because according to Islam, I mean, if a Muslim uh, kills another Muslim, both of them go to, to hell. So they, there, there must be some kind of new, um, I mean, uh, new interpretations for this issue to, so to make people um, uh, can, can kill other people, uh, can, other Muslims, and make their behavior. So the, the, it has to be new. The, the, the new interpretations developed to make um, their behavior look lawful, and leaders of each each uh, uh, of opposing militia provide their followers with interpretations which make them think that their uh, they that, that they religiously speaking are on the right side, fighting a holy war for a noble cause. That's when who upon dying in a battle will be considered as a martyr and their soul transported to heaven. Such a claim looks very appealing since every Muslim will cherish highly such an, such, such an end of life. This Libyan subculture is new and is still beginning form. An important question may be raised concerning the size of the population that belong to this new subculture. It is not easy to answer such a question. However, it would be possible to count, to count leaders because they have, them, they, they have made themselves known. Despite the fact that the fighting has not stopped since uh, 2011, it is easy to observe the the um, the, in, the indignation of the man and the street because the civil war made life for the majority of Libyans very miserable. Also, it is our assumption that average Libyan finds vocabulary that the fighting groups and their supporters have been using is highly reprehensible language which no respectable individual should use. Therefore, it is expected that many of those individuals who belong to the uh, or, or sympathize with this new subculture will, will not declare that openly due to social pressure from their traditional social groups. Even every Libyan belonged to a tribe, and this became apparent in the individual, in the, uh, for, uh, as individuals present themselves during the international, international process in everyday life activities. Members of a tribe brag about what the tribe has accomplished. The accomplishment of one specific individual 
will be ascribed by the tribe. And every member will, will look at this accomplishment as his or her own. On the other side, if a member of the tribe performs a shameful act, everyone in the tribe will feel shame. There, there, uh, there is, uh, there is a, 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 a aphorism that says, support your brother, whether he was oppressive or oppressed. Tribes are different in size and power. Nevertheless, it is, it is expected that everyone is proud of his tribe. As, as to, uh, and, he be, and he would be prepared to assist and support tribes member to the uh, to prove the strength of tri of his tribal loyalty such strength of loyalty tribal loyalty many uh, uh, may sacrifice sometimes the interest of the institution or even the interest of the state today the majority of Libyans live in urban centers and are familiar with both material and non-material aspects of modern living. In, in other words, Libya became um, a modern, modern society. Consequently, many, uh, many of uh, many um, uh, <coughs> modern living. In other words, Libya became a modern society. Consequently, one may expect that many traditional aspects that dominate social life in rural areas, especially those uh, related to informal means of, co of uh, cooperation, have weakened or even disappeared. On the contrary, social relations have not become uh, completely for formal. Traditional informal relations are still strong, especially those that take that are based on face-to-face -face interaction between neighbors. And regardless of whether individuals belong to the same tribe or to different tribes, sharing but sharing to the same the, the same geographical area. Nowadays in Libya and similar societies in a tribal a tribe does not exist in isolation rather many tribes share the same geographical space whether it is a village or a town or a city thus individuals from different tribe uh, tribes socialize with each other and build close social uh, relationships consequently the strong degree of cooperation and the cohesiveness among tribe members will be extended to the collection to the collection of tribes sharing the same geographical space this probably is typical of it of all traditional societies especially those that have enjoyed some sort of peace and tranquility for a long period of time even though social uh, structures of modern societies are different from those of traditional uh, societies. Certain social characteristics are present in both. But aggressive hate speech used by the, those who belong to the subculture of hate has led to the hostilities between neighbors and has had negative effect on uh, the state of coexistent among Libyans. Uh, hostilities now are different from those used to occur between tribes in the past, and which were resolved through uh, reconcil reconciliation committees and uh, undertaking by traditional leaders. In brief, before uh, 2011, uprising, traditional tribal hostilities were uh, resolved at the level of the civil society, judging from the severity of hate speech using, uh, used by conflicting groups, we assume that this new type of hostilities cannot be resolved applying the same uh, procedures Libyans used to use. The, the country has to design uh, and, uh, and implement a lengthy program of tra transitional justice. As the level 
of the hatred become stronger, one may conclude my, that the, the, the probability that the hater, whether an individual or a group, will take a severe action against the hatred object, the hated object. This severe action may take several forms. The individual or the group object of hatred may be forced to move to uh, another uh, and settle in another residential area or move to another city or may even may be, may be even uh, mistreated injured or even killed as the level of hate in libya increases it will it will lead to a situation of fragmentation of the social fabric and even to the uh, rupture of the community of social of, of community social structure so far many idbs including at least the residents of four of those five uh, ghost towns have returned but neither neither the physical place nor their neighbors were the same as far as neighbors are concerned, instead of cooperation and, and uh, synergy, each party insults and denounces the other party. If such a state of fragmentation prevails among the neighbors, this will be there will be little prospect for reconstruction projects that usually follow the end of an armed conflict to rebuild the state and society again. The most viable consequence will be so far the country to be divided into smaller political entities. These units or, 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 and, or, or states will be neighbors, but instead of good neighborhoods uh, relationships, their, their inter, 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 interconnection will be characterized by this harmony and conflict. Um, I think I'll stop right here and thank you for listening and I'm waiting for to listen to hear your questions or, or uh, comments. Uh, thank you uh, so much, Professor Tier, uh, for your very interesting and very deep presentation. Uh, I think there are a lot of questions. Uh, I, uh, I can see hand of uh, Professor Trujewczyk. Uh, Konstantin, please, uh, you can start our discussion. Yes, uh, dear Dr. Mustafa, thank you very much for your extremely valuable and useful lecture because we are all interested uh, uh, profoundly in what is uh, happening in Libya. And uh, uh, your lecture added lots to our, I would say, rather poor knowledge about uh, the, the, the uh, real, um, well, uh, political process in, in the country. But uh, I would like to, to ask you, uh, well, some two or three questions which seem to me of extreme importance. First, at the beginning of your lecture, you stated that the main actors in political process in Libya are militias, which are more than 1,000, you said. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, more, more close to the end of the lecture, it became evident that still uh, the, the tribal structure of uh, society is one of the basic uh, things, and it remains so. And even uh, you spoke about the link between militias and tribes. So my question is, uh, uh, who is, who is the, basically the main actor now? Because anyhow, uh, uh, militias, as far as I understand, are a product of, of urban society. And Libyan society, according to statistics, is a highly urbanized society, more than 80% of people living in the cities and towns. At the same time, uh, well, uh, uh, tribes are, uh, uh, well, the uh, basic products 
a product of, uh, of a rural society. Usually the centers of, of the tribes are outside the main uh, cities. So how, how, can you, uh, how can you explain uh, the, the correlation, the link uh, between uh, the two factors, between, uh, between militias and tribes, and uh, uh, who is the main actor anyhow now, the tribes or militias? Thank you. Uh, shall I answer right away? I think yes. Oh, all right. Thank you. Well, thank you for listening and thank you for the question. Yes, the situation in Libya is, is rather complicated, actually. The, uh, the, of course, the, the main, the, the, the every, every Libyan belong to a tribe, actually. So there is no division between tribe, the, the, the tribe and militia. Militias are not from the urban society. No, no. Of course, actually, Libya now has become mostly urban, I mean. Um, the, uh, the, the, I mean, more than 80%, actually, they are live in cities. And the militias actually um, uh, were formed in every, uh, in the rural area and in, in, the, in, the, in the town or in, this, in the city also. But the relations between tribes and militias is a little bit, I think, it's a, it's a, it's a strong. I mean, these militias belong to the uh, tribes, and uh, so. Uh, but the but after the end of the war, I mean, after after Gaddafi died, those who were fighting against him. Uh, turn to the to to themselves. I mean, toward toward each other. So there, because everyone wants to get as much uh, as much gain as possible. As much as you as you probably know, the only the only income, the only major income of Libya is oil, and oil. I mean, in Libya is. Uh, 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 transferred into money, and the money uh, are, is in the hands of those who are uh, uh, take. I mean, considered to be leaders in that specific time. Now, when you look at the situation, now we do have um, governments, and we ministers and cabinet members and things like that, directors and everything. But actually, the the power of the militia leaders is very strong. That they can they can uh, have their own uh, people employed in specific places where they depend on them to move a lot of that lot of sum of money uh, around. And um, which is this is this is one of the problems of Libya right now that these militias became become became very strong and uh, and also the their the, it's difficult to bring them together i mean before the before the 2011 probably uh, uh, there is a problem between two individuals from two different tribes uh, all uh, all people and the tribe in both tribes can solve the problem. Right now, it is difficult to be solved because everybody has has uh, has uh, has um, uh, guns, the, all kinds of guns. I mean, not only guns, even even uh, very strong, very uh, very complex, very sophisticated uh, uh, weapons. And uh, many, many of, of uh, maybe small, small, different, uh, I mean, in in, uh, in in ideas solved only through um, uh, a small war. So I mean, we we have witnessed many uh, armed clashes. I mean, almost on a daily basis, and. Uh, uh, and uh, it seems to me, I'm, maybe I'm, uh, I'm, maybe I don't know if I'm an old 
So I am not optimistic, but I am very pessimistic that I don't see a future in Libya as a state. I mean, this is why I said that probably it will happen that that uh, Libya will end be divided into small entities, and uh, even though they are neighbors, we're going to be neighbors, but we are we're not going to be friends. I mean, or not. not the relationship between the neighbors would not to be uh, very good. Um, even though, I mean, uh, modernization now has been, I mean, the country went through uh, maybe what we call social change, but tribal, the, the, the identity of a tribe did not disappear. So when one talks uh, with another one, uh, always thinks of his uh, tribal background, and uh, so so I'm, I'm to the degree to the degree that the individual the individual does not act as an individual. I mean, he's not totally uh, 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 has his own idea. I mean, has his own um, ideas and uh, uh, decisions. So a lot of times. He has to to think of uh, to what to what the that the tribe um, consider right and wrong, uh, but I know that this is a problem. Is uh, even though the the those who are um, uh, controlling the scene generally right now those militias and uh, but also uh, the the tribe. Uh, the uh, tribal leaders they try to to, to gain to get, get I mean to 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 have their own say even though it seems to me tribe some some uh, some malicious leaders become stronger than tribal uh, leaders I mean you we used to I mean the tra in traditional society a tribal uh, the head of the tribe, is considered uh, like the father of, of all, and uh, his uh, word to be uh, heard, uh, to be uh, heard by everybody. Now uh, it became, I, th I think, the the strong uh, the strong position is for the for the leader of a militia, a strong militia. Uh, so it is um, the, the situation is very complicated actually in Libya right now. Uh, I don't know if I answered all the issue or not. Uh, oh, thank you. Just one more question, and I will uh, give the floor to others. Uh, well, uh, about uh, uh, Libyan mafia. What is Libyan mafia, actually? Are they uh, tribal clans? or more members of militias? That's, if you understand my question, that's, uh, I, I will try to repeat it. <laughs> what is Libyan Mafia? Are they tribal clans or uh, more uh, uh, urban militias? Thank you. Uh, no, actually, the, 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 these Mafia people, individuals, actually, they are, they, are, they they uh, out of the tribe actually they don't belong they they they, they don't uh, go by the tribal uh, law or they consider tribal uh, tribe uh, uh, leaders no they are like um, they are criminals actually they are criminals they commit all kinds of crime uh, they deal with the with the human trafficking they deal with uh, smuggling uh, all kinds of uh, of uh, goods, they uh, even uh, the smuggling even uh, oil. I, I mean, petrol. Uh, I mean, and they have connections with all kinds of mafias, not only with Africans but even with the Europeans. I mean, they deal with the mafias in Italy and uh, in uh, in uh, Malta. Uh, so are they are a gang of they are gangs. I mean, they are gangs. They are criminal gangs. And the situation that many young individuals who don't have good job, 
they found that it is it is quite useful to be in these kinds of of uh, of, of uh, mafia groups. Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Tyr. Uh, I have two hands here, but uh, before uh, giving the floor uh, to Andrei Chiprigan, I have my own question about the small entities you mentioned uh, in your uh, presentation. Uh, to which uh, measure, from your point of view, the small entities, uh, like, as I understand, Beni Walid, Masrat, Asirt, and others, uh, have now uh, to, to which measure they have now characteristics of uh, proto-state uh, if they can become a, a real uh, small states small polit uh, uh or it's uh, just a uh, temporary situation uh, which uh, will be uh, changed uh, with, with time if you uh, understand my question. Yes, 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 yes. Well, actually, um, um, right now, there are um, few issues was very confusing. I mean, there are kind of, they, they these, these, um, these, uh, what you what you what I might call a city state. Some of them uh, have their own uh, have their own uh, po policy, or they have they have own um, uh, way of doing things independently from others. I mean, uh, as if. A small, as if a small state, but within a large state. Well, uh, this is happening now. I mean, there is a division between cities, and of course, the div divisions between regions. And uh, it is difficult for some people to go from from one place to another. I mean. Uh, I mean, for individuals who are, like, say, in power. For example, I mean, uh, even though the government right now we have, it is supposed to be government for all Libya, but it is not easy for for cabinet members to move from 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 region to region sometimes. And I mean, many times they can't go from from the from from Tripoli region to 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 Cyrenaica, for example, because that in every in 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 Cyrenaica, there is a, 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 a power there which is imposing its rules and regulations over over the rest of the region, so. Also, when you think about moving from uh, visiting from uh, another city, if you belong from, uh, if you are from Misrata, for example, I mean, if you are an average Misrata individual, going to Benulid is no problem. But you are, if you, but you are, if you are considered a a militia leader from Misrata to going to Benulid, it's not, it's, it's not an easy, an easy task. So. The, the, there are now uh, hostilities between between groups. Uh, is it possible that these hostilities will will die down? I am not very optimistic. This is the problem because I see it as the as the hate uh, the hate uh, hate this hate speech which is. Uh, uh, been going on for quite a while now has divided people. I mean, the people that they they hate each other now, and uh, I don't know if you if you follow this kind of mass killing of individuals and uh, put them on a on a massive graves in and with not in a, not in a normal cemetery, but in an, in a desert. Or a, I mean, this is this kind of hate. 
is a new in Libya. And uh, this is why I said it is probably this uh, subculture of hate will have social fragmentation. Uh, I mean, the, so the, these social boundaries which keep, keep Libyans together uh, might, uh, might become very, very weak to, 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 for the country to continue. Many times I don't see that Libya is, going, is, becoming, is going back again to, to the, uh, to the as a Libyan state, uh, as probably you know, when when we first uh, Libya got and, and, uh, its independence, it was three three, uh, three, three like a a, a united uh, a, 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 a united kingdom of three states, and uh, and there are excuse me, and there are some. Uh, uh, I mean, there is that feeling that uh, we belong. I mean, I belong to that certain uh, uh, state, uh, and uh, I mean, a little bit different from the other. But anyway, when by 1963, actually, the king then was uh, able to uh, have uh, as a united uh, uh, kingdom again and. But but I think the feelings of uh, of belonging to a specific uh, state did not disappear, and uh, until today there are indeed that we we hear voices which uh, uh, loud and, and 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 clear that we want uh, in certain places that we want our own state uh, or independent state. Uh, but I hope that I am wrong in this, uh, in this, uh, in this conclusion. I mean, but uh, hoping, or uh, what I hope is is one thing, and what's going to happen is another thing. Now, every Libyans hope that that Libya will be a state uh, again. I mean, a st strong state uh, or cohesive state. But even with this, uh, the, with this coming uh, election, I'm not very optimistic. I see. But we will hope that uh, your hope and the reality will become the one, the same thing. <laughs> I, I, uh, also, I yes, I I, I would like to. To, to say so, I would like to say so, but sometimes I can't say it. I see. Now I give floor to Andrei Chuprygin, uh, Higher School of Economics. Andrei... Uh, yes, thank you. Professor Atios, thank you very much for uh, that most comprehensive uh, uh, conversation. I have uh, a continuation of what you finished uh, talking now. We are coming to the elections on the 24th. The elections that were uh, mostly, uh, to a large extent, imposed on Libya uh, uh, from outside. I mean, not the elections per se, but the, uh, uh, this period of time, timeline of the elections. Uh, we've had uh, recently a very heated discussion about the elect election issue. Uh, uh, in the framework of the Mediterranean dialogue. So I have a question. Um, are there uh, high expectations in Libya towards those elections or medium expectations or no expectations at all? What's your impression? I understand that you are uh, occupying a very pessimistic position, same as myself, but uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, the uh, people on the street, uh, what do you hear? Uh, what do they say uh, about uh, uh, this event which is coming? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, uh, the international uh, community or the international power made the decision to have the election on the 24th of the December. But this doesn't mean uh, that uh, Libyans, all, all Libyans uh, uh, accept that. Of course, there are many accept that, or, or, th or they think that this is their way out of this uh, fragmentation today, I mean, or this uh, disturbance which they live in, 
or this bad situation they are living in now, they think that probably the election will, uh, because I, because before I say that, many Libyans probably, I would say, assume that they don't trust their political leaders of today. They don't have a high trust of people, especially if in the administration. So they think maybe the election will keep these individuals away. At, at least we, we, we shall get rid of these individuals. This is many people, they, 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 they uh, approve of this election because many, they want uh, many uh, faces will disappear, either from the government or from what they call the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the parliament or the, uh, or the others, other body in, in Tripoli. Uh, those who are on the scene, is, uh, who are uh, on the scene right now, they are not popular. They don't, their popularity is very low among Libyans and many Libyans like to go to uh, the, like, like think that the election will will uh, will bring a new new breed maybe will be better than the experience uh, during these 10 years uh, others of course there are others who think they are against the uh, the uh, the uh, the election and there are some militias also uh, um, against uh, against uh, um, uh, uh, yani against uh, against uh, what's going to happen in 24 and 24th of December and maybe in some areas they will force people not to elect actually now uh, the the international um, uh, community thinks that the, the this coming election will solve some of Libyan's problems. And uh, if you ask my uh, opinion, uh, my, uh, my own opinion, I don't think that will solve the, 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 if the election took place, it will not solve the Libyan problems. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that there will be, may, uh, that will go back to more uh, fighting and more clashes. Thank you. Uh, uh, the next question is from uh, Boris Delgov, Institute of Oriental Studies, and then Grigory Lukyanov. Uh, Boris, please, Professor Delgov, uh, turn on your mic. Boris, uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I uh, thank uh, very much uh, uh, our guest uh, professor uh, Riti uh, for this uh, presentation, very, very interesting. Uh, if, uh, it, if it is possible, I, I do some comments, small comments, and then my question. Uh, of course, uh, the situation in Libya is very complicated. And the reasons or causes of the crisis in Libya in uh, 2011 are also very complicated. Uh, I, uh, I would like to speak about uh, the uh, foreign factors, foreign actors uh, who uh, also um, did uh, something, uh, not something, but did uh, very, very uh, intervention uh, in uh, Libya after the beginning of the crisis. But, uh, first of all, I, uh, I want to uh, say that uh, the if uh, we look on the situation in Libya before crisis, uh, uh, social, economical, and political situation in Libya before crisis, before uh, 2011. Uh, it was the best, I think, uh, the best uh, situation about the economy 
uh, political, economical, and social situation in uh, Libya uh, in comparison with uh, approximately uh, all Arabic countries, uh, because uh, uh, the politic uh, of uh, Gaddafi uh, uh, before crisis uh, was uh, the um, politic uh, uh, which uh, proclaimed a new ideology. It's now new ideology, Jamahiriya. Uh, Jamahiriya. And uh, uh, the uh, uh, life uh, level in Libya uh, and uh, some, uh, some positions in Libyan ec economy uh, economical situation was uh, very nice in comparison with uh, other uh, Arabic countries. For example, about uh, the uh, the uh, rights for citizens, Libyan citizens, to study abroad, uh, about the prices, about uh, the uh, all. Uh, all, all positions of life. Uh, we know, for example, uh, every year before crisis, every year, million, one million uh, Egyptians uh, going uh, to Libya to work uh, because the uh, salaries uh, in Libya uh, were very high. It's now. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, the role of uh, foreigner uh, actors uh, in crisis in Libya, in, in the crush of the uh, Libyan regime of Gaddafi, uh, was very, very important. Uh, as we know, uh, after decision of uh, United, uh, of uh, UN, uh, uh, United Nations, uh, to uh, which uh, opened uh, the way to military intervention from abroad to Libya. It uh, uh, really was uh, the start, real start of uh, the uh, conflict in uh, Libya. And uh, uh, that's why I, I think, uh, I repeat, uh, by my opinion, the role of uh, foreign factors, foreign uh, actors uh, in Libyan crisis uh, uh, was very important. And maybe uh, responsib responsibility of uh, the crisis in Libya uh, only, uh, also on the this, uh, uh, foreign actors. Uh, namely France, uh, of course, uh, Great Britain, uh, United States, uh, etc., and some Arabic countries. Uh, it's uh, the commons, uh, if it is possible. And the, the, <clears throat> my question about the uh, situation now in Libya, uh, what uh, what uh, uh, the, the possi possibility to uh, to do solution of uh, Syria uh, of uh, Libyan crisis now? Because uh, we now we now uh, elections uh, maybe uh, will be in twenty four December, uh, and uh, there is some uh, some people who uh, wants uh, to. Uh, to, uh, to participate in these uh, elections. And what, what uh, do you think about the uh, candidature, uh, for example, uh, Saif al-Islam, the son of uh, uh, Gaddafi, and uh, uh, Marshal Khalifa Haftar? Uh, and uh, also, what, what do you think about the, the future of uh, these elections? Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Of course, of course, the 
most of the the intervention, the international intervention is is uh, did so bad to Libya to the to Libyan situation, and the but the problem is that a lot of Libyans also they uh, they has uh, they they are divided between the the loyalties to this. Uh, to these international, uh, uh, to these international uh, countries, also each country has now a group of Libyans be behind them and uh, doing their work. So even the wars, I mean the civil wars we have, the many wars, they are they are they are wars, they are what we call wars by by proxy, by by uh, proxy. I mean we Libyans fought against each other but for the sake of other european countries anyway uh, yeah yeah you are right i mean during before uh, 2011 the living the standard of living in libya was uh, all right but the problem is that gaddafi was a dictatorship and uh, the uh, the, there is no, uh, there is no way of challenging uh, his ideas. Of, there is no way that, that, that the, I mean, the freedom of a speech is very limited. I mean, Gaddafi uh, uh, forced Libyans to to uh, abide by his. Uh, by the uh, interpretation of his small book, the Green Book, and uh, not everything in the Green Book is good anyway. Uh, so actually, especially the young people now, after the they were able to get information from everywhere and to travel everywhere, they 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 got uh, they got uh, I mean uh, 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 they got disturbed by this uh, situation uh, they are living in, in Libya. They were not happy. Happy actually, the 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 uprising, the start of the uprising was was actually by 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 young people, not by by but not by the old generation. But then the old generation uh, came came along. But the young those the young people who uh, th these are the group who who uh, was very uh, frustrated and uh, they turned against uh, the, the against, against Gaddafi and they actually they started I mean they 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 want to may, maybe what happened in Tunis and Egypt and the, the rest of the Arab world um, encourage them but actually there is a high degree of frustration within Libya during the Gaddafi area because he's a a very, I mean, he has a dictatorship, at, um, and uh, and um, Libyans. I mean, maybe those who are old, they are they don't have they they are got used to the situation. But the young generation, uh, they, they don't they want to live as uh, as uh, as others. So the idea of democracy uh, was actually. Uh, 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 cherished by many young uh, Libyans. Um, I, I mean, as far as the economy is concern, concerned, still Libya sells uh, a, a, a great deal of oil and get a lot of money. I mean, Libya, but the money now is not used efficiently, but actually Libya still have a high income, but uh, the way it is used or the way it is, it is not distributed wisely and these the uh, the uh, these uh, different uh, uh, groups of uh, power uh, uh, who can get held of uh, uh, some sums of money uh, uh, they do it and also some some of them uh, uh, i mean the, the most important thing that for everybody is to get as much money as possible and and take it away from libya i mean not not keep it in or uh, invest it in libya no they they take it away so uh, i mean uh, Rasan salama when he said uh, last time that uh, every day there is a millionaire in libya he was not exaggerating actually uh, and the these millionaires Millionaires are not are not the intellectuals or the uh, old people or they, they are very young. They are individuals in the streets actually, the young people. But they, but they have the they have the power. They have the the military power which they force uh, others to give money. Um, 
But I, but you are right. The international intervention was not the, the good of Libya. No, of course, and um, <coughs> Libya suffered su 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 suffered a lot, and is still suffering from that because the division between the international community uh, has its, its implications in, in the local Libyan life. Yeah, you are right. I mean. Uh, th thank you, uh, Grigory Lupiano, for uh, Department of the Institute of Political Studies and the Higher School of Economics. Please, Grigory. Um, yes, uh, thank you, Vasily. Um, I realize that our conversation has been going on for about an hour and a half, and many words of things have already been said to Professor Atir. And he may have uh, grown tired of questions uh, from our side, but uh, I'm very grateful for this opportunity to listen to Professor Atir after reading some of his articles and books. And I will try to ask two questions. One of them is um, a bit more popular. The second one is a bit more academic from my point of view. And so um, the first one is uh, from my collection of questions that was gathered before is about the evolution of the legitimacy of traditional and new religious authorities in Libya. So um, you have already said about the identity, the process of identity transformation. Uh, what is the role of traditional uh, religious authorities and maybe new uh, centers of such religious uh, ideas, religious influence in uh, contemporary Libyan society. And the second question is about uh, Libyan intellectuals nowadays uh, and uh, Libyan uh, system of education. You have already mentioned during your election um, the educational system. Uh, can you uh, pay for it much more attention and uh, maybe add some details about, uh, I, I understand very skeptical I, in general opinion about changes in educational system, but what is the situation nowadays? Maybe some figures, some main factors, maybe some main thoughts. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, hmm. And the first question was uh, related to the uh, religious the, authorities. Ah, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> this is one of the. This is also a major problem in Libya right now. This is the what we call the religious. Uh, uh, as as you probably know, is the Islamic religion. Uh, supposed to be no what we call the religious leaders but actually there are now there are a lot of people who are who belong to different uh, sects who consider themselves authority in uh, Isla in uh, islamic law and sharia and this is one of the major problems in the in the in this in the one one major problem also inside libya now because they do uh, have this uh, fatwa, uh, fatwa which is a, uh, which is a, supposed to be a a, a wise, a wise, a wise advice or a wise measure, not only advice, a wise uh, statement which everybody has to abide by, which uh, with with but 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 every group have its own, and there are. Uh, uh, contradiction between these statements, and this is also uh, the, as the local community suffers from these uh, from these groups. I mean, even the issue of uh, of uh, of democracy is considered by them, by some of them. Is, this is not uh, this is against Islam. The issue of uh, of uh, election uh, where. So the, uh, according to the Mufti, hey, we should we shouldn't we shouldn't have uh, election. But even though he he asked his uh, his uh, his uh, people who follow him for, for, for him, he, they should stop this uh, uh, this uh, 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 activity. I mean, in his in his last in his, one of his last speeches, you can 
you can uh, interfere and uh, you can uh, get the idea that probably he asking his uh, his his followers even to use power to to stop the uh, issue of elections so the the situation of these uh, religion leaders is also having its uh, negative impact on what's going on in libya now the education situation actually is is bad is bad i, I mean education deteriorated um, deteriorated uh, a lot and uh, the level of um, of uh, education I'm, I'm not uh, i'm not happy with it uh, not only for the university level but even the the pre university levels is, is bad so the right now <coughs> there's there should be a major um, interference in the education system to, to bring it back to, to what it used to be. Uh, and if, if things stay as they are, I think uh, we are, Libya is going uh, through a very dark, uh, dark situation because education is very important. I mean, good, good education is important, not any education. Right now, as far as, as numbers are concerned, yes, every Libyan has a chance to go to school. But uh, the, what they learn in school, this is the problem now. Uh, <clears throat> some of them learn um, what, what I might call the rubbish. Sorry to say that. Thank you. So, I don't want to, to go further in this issue because it's a problematic. I see. I see. I, see. I understand you. Thank you for it. For your answer. Uh, thank you. And the next uh, speaker is uh, Karina Sidorenko, Institute of Oriental Studies. Karina, please. Um, thank you, Professor Atil, a lot for your really interesting presentation and like for plenty of ideas to think about. Uh, you said that uh, militias and fighting groups in Libya are trying to get um, uh, more, um, uh, with fight uh, more money and mainly from oil. Uh, but uh, the last 10 years of armed conflicts uh, showed that war is um, an obstacle to get uh, high revenues. I mean, for example, during the capture of oil infrastructure facilities by Khalifa Haftar, Libya didn't really get any revenues because uh, uh, ports were closed and objects were closed. Uh, so oil profits are much less now than before 2011. And, uh, Mm, not really distributed among uh, narrow uh, among population and only distributed among uh, narrow groups. And people are suffering, as you said, uh, the more conflict continues. So my question, uh, can oil be a factor of uh, reconciliation? I mean, economic factors, uh, can they be an impetus, um, an incentive to these fighting uh, sides to negotiate with each other? Because uh, war, uh, seems to be not really profitable even uh, to these militias nowadays. Hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't. Let, I did not get the question. Can um, oil what? Can oil be a factor? I mean, an incentive, an impetus, a reason to negotiate. Uh, I mean, that this uh, fighting militias uh, can negotiate with each other because even uh, they don't really get high oil revenues uh, during the last ten years. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. No, but even though. The uh, the uh, amount of uh, oil exported uh, exported from Libya is is uh, fluctuating during the ten years. Actually, it it comes down to almost nothing uh, for uh, in few years. But the last few years, actually, Libya came back again to one million and one million and something uh, barrel a day. And Libyans, Libya is not a big country. I mean, it's not as far population as far as the population is concerned is a small country anyway so whatever they get it's get it's, it's enough but uh, but i'm afraid that the, to say that maybe oil also is part of the problem because if libya is a is a very poor become is poor as it used to be then there is no nobody will be interested in it and the libyans will will be calm calm and uh, get to 
get to get to get together uh, as uh, they used to so oil actually is also not all of it is good uh, actually it has a, a bad factor because it's a lot of the international in, 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 uh, intervention in libya is because libya is a is a oil producing country and uh, and the the ability to to export even two million barrels a day, it's 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 in in the in the near future actually, if if tranquility and peace comes to Libya. So, um, but but the fighting between between militias is because of these oil revenues, and each one wants to get as much money as possible. Uh, or, or uh, I mean, I I don't mean on as an individual level, also on the on the community level. For example, a city or a tribe wants to get, I mean, hold uh, to put its people in the uh, in good positions in in the in the government, so they can move uh, sums of money around and they can get benefit to the to the community to their to their local community. So I I would say probably oil also is a part of our our problems at Libya. Uh, thank you. And uh, the next question, and uh, we're working already uh, for more than one hour and a half, and maybe it is one of the last questions, is uh, by uh, Igor Kondrashov from uh, St. Petersburg State University. Please, Igor. So, hello. First of all, I want to thank you for the interesting action. Certainly, I'm studying conflicts in Africa, so your points brought some changes in my mind, and uh, I think it would uh, bring some additions to my qualification work. So, just because I'm, yeah, I'm writing qualification work this year, and my question has two parts. Uh, the first, uh, the first part is: Was the Gaddafi's regime largely based on raw material selling? And after all, uh, can Libya stand as a democratic state after the ten years of uh, some kind of civil war? So, was oil the main problem of the Gaddafi's regime? And uh, can oil be such a part of uh, standing the democratic? Uh, Democratic state, democratic Libya, after some kind of years. And the second part is: mm. um, Is it even possible uh, to bring uh, the democratic states in uh, Arabic uh, governments or some kind of that? So, is uh, Islam uh, connects <laughs> with democratic uh, tradition? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you. <laughs> now this is a problem. I mean, uh, of course, uh, is it possible to build a democratic state without uh, individuals who believe in democracy? Is it possible? Uh, this is a one million one million dollar question. I would say, uh, many of us, one of us who as intellectuals, do not think that it is possible to build democracy if you don't have a values, democratic values in this society. And as far as Arab countries are concerned, or the Arab, uh, the Arab culture is concerned, the uh, values which are, which are supposed to be uh, there, I mean, has to be there before you think of democracy, democracy are not there actually. So, but like uh, what happened in, um, in the movement of the Arab Spring, I mean, on the streets of Arab cities, the youngsters, because uh, maybe they, because of the international, I mean, uh, 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 international uh, uh, knowledge, they uh, they they were chanting uh, that we are going to build a democratic society. Uh, now, as we will talk about Libya, ten years later, there is nothing called democratic <laughs> democracy in Libya. No. There's nothing like that. And uh, we shouldn't fool ourselves. I mean, as intellectuals, we shouldn't 
fool ourselves and said, we do have a democracy. No, we don't. Uh, but the system, I mean, the, the, the Libya lived in 42 years of a, this, this, uh, very, very strong dictatorship uh, the, uh, situation, and it was um, very difficult to 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 have uh, uh, to, to 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 develop values during that era of Gaddafi, uh, which will be uh, will be this the source of a democratic system someday. But uh, so therefore, I was not from the beginning. I did not expect. That when Gaddafi leaves, that Libyans will be able to to develop a democratic society. No, I I, I mean I thought maybe, and many people now nowadays they said we used to have one 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 dictatorship called Muammar Gaddafi. Now we have thousands of Muammar Gaddafi around with different names. Well, this is very bad. But the other question of 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 uh, of uh, oil. Uh, I don't. I didn't understand. Just said whether oil is going to be. Uh, I mean, oil. Uh, the, uh, if, if if the revenue of oil used wisely, of course, Libya can build a, can 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 have a very good future. But in order to 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 get use of that uh, that uh, revenue of oil, you have first to have. People who have good heads, good good heads, running the country. I'm sorry to say that many of those who are were running the show the last the last uh, ten years, they don't have heads on their, they don't have anything in their heads. I mean, uh, useful for for running a country that, uh, wisely. So this is why I mean. Uh, I'm, I'm not very optimistic as far as the near future, but someday, someday, probably maybe it will be something different. I hope. Uh, thank you. And uh, we have uh, one more question, and uh, I think that will be the last one by uh, Elizabeth Abulach, uh, Institute of Oriental Studies. Elizabeth, please. Uh. Hi, thank you very much. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Uh, you can. Yeah. No video. Uh, Hear you. Uh, oh, sir, uh, Elizabeth, uh, uh, turn on. Yes, yes. Hi, thank you very much uh, for your lecture. It was very interesting. I have a question uh, concerning the mediation process and uh, concerning the, uh, the two things the Libyan political dialogue forum and uh, the, the national dialogue, uh, this instrument, this mechanism, uh, how do you evaluate it? Uh, do you think um, uh, it was good and it worked uh, for Libya and it was one of the breaking points uh, or it uh, didn't work? And uh, the second question is about the, the project of the humanitarian dialogue. What can I say about it? Thank you very much. I, I didn't hear the question very good. I didn't hear very good. Very good. Question is uh, about the uh, mediation process in Libya. We know that according to Ghassan Salama uh, plan of uh, recon reconciliation, there was an idea of national conference and there was an attempt to uh, create a national dialogue in Libya. Yes, and, yes, yes. Uh, several attempts. There, there were several several attempts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first one is 2017. It was the Libyan National Conference process, yeah. and it was uh, initiated by Ghassan Salame uh, by his speech and. Uh, but it was uh, broken uh, by the events that happened uh, just a few days before uh, before the final uh, event. And uh, the second one was uh, organized uh, again with the help of the United Nations Security Council and with the help and the auspice of the UN. It's the uh, it's it's 2000, uh, 2020. 
It's a Libyan political dialogue forum. It's both the same. It's all both about the mechanism of national dialogue, about the mediation process. And I wanted to, to ask, what do you think about this mechanism, about these formats? Uh, does it work uh, in such situations, like uh, in such conflicts and uh, or because it's it's also uh, with the help of the f foreign parties and uh, what do you think about it? Mm. <coughs> All right, thank you, thank you. Actually, a national dialogue is necessary, but it has to be national. It has to be, it has to start from inside, not from outside. Actually, Libyans has to come together, has to realize that they have to come together by themselves, not by, but another, um, uh, somebody else imposing uh, the, 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 and, and planning their, their coming together. Uh, uh, it is in, in any case, in any, in any case like uh, what happened in Libya, uh, in order to, to, the, to have the society come together again, you have to have a national dialogue, but it has to be, um, to, has to be um, uh, based on uh, uh, inside need, not uh, imposed from outside, outside Libya. This is why the, most of the early uh, attempts did not uh, end, uh, reach its end. But a national dialogue, yes, it is necessary that you have to have a national, national, national dialogue and uh, to come to, 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 uh, to have uh, agreement on certain bases, uh, how to live together and how to, to carry things inside Libya again. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much. If we have uh, other questions or comments, if we don't have, uh, I uh, want to thank a lot, uh, Professor Atir, I uh, for your brilliant presentation for this uh, very frank and interesting conversation. I hope that. Uh, uh, when we meet uh, next time, you you won't be uh, so sad about the future of the country and about the situation <laughs> of the country. I hope that uh, 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 okay. the, the reality will become uh, closer to our hopes, uh, and uh, we can uh, organize some meeting not not just in Zoom but in uh, Libya too. Uh, All right. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for ha for having me, and I have a good chance to to talk to a different uh, group of people. Thank you very much for this uh, this uh, what, what you organized, and I, I hope that this uh, uh, new uh, new relationship will be will continue uh, on both sides. Thank you. Hope to. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. And bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.